everybody, my name is Corey Hart. I'm an education specialist with Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department. Uh, today I'm going to teach, be teaching you all about tip-ups. Uh, tip-ups come in many different shapes and sizes. Uh, today I have with me two different styles of tip-ups. I have with me a standard uh, polar tip-up and a heritage tip-up. You'll see just looking at them, they look very different, but they both accomplish the exact same thing. Uh, the general concept with the, both of these devices is fly goes up, it means I have a fish on the line. The other style of fishing that most people are familiar with would be jigging. And with jigging, it was a more of an active style of fishing, where I would actually be standing there with the rod in my hand. With a tip up, this device actually does the fishing for me. As I set it, I kind of walk away, and I come back to it once the fly goes up. The tip up I'm going to be showing you how to use today is actually going to be the polar tip up. I'm going to be showing you this style because this is more of an introductory style that a lot of people get started on. That said, uh, there's so many different styles of tip ups out there. First things first, I'm going to get my line out. And our tip ups have two different types of line on them. My first line this is going to be my main ice fishing line. It's typically about 30 pound braid. And you'll see that right here. From my main ice fishing line, depending on the type of fishing I'm doing, it's going to go into a leader. This tip up is set up for panfish right now, so it has about six pound test on it and about a three foot leader. If I was fishing for pike, I would have typically a steel leader on because pike have very sharp teeth and they bite right through this. If it was six pound test, they would chew it right off. Regardless of the type of fish I'm fishing for, I've got to get my line down to the fish's level somehow. And the way we do that is with this device right here. And that is what's called a sounder. And a sounder is nothing more than a rock. And it's really all it is. It's a heavy weight that's going to allow us to get right down to the bottom. Sometimes I might choose to set my tip up right under the ice. And there's a variety of different reasons I might do that. Maybe I'm fishing for salmon where they're, they're running right underneath the ice. But a lot of times, I'm going to be fishing right on the bottom. And that's typically if I'm fishing for perch or a lot of other species. Uh, because that's where the bait fish are and what they're eating. So to make sure I get to the right depth, I'm going to use this sounder. And all I'm going to do is to simulate that, for argument's sake, what we're going to do is say that this board right here is our ice. This ice, I'm going to drop it right in. And you'll see that sounder just hit the bottom. Now all I'm going to do is take my tip up and reel it in. And you'll notice that I'm actually reeling it in by hand. And that's so that I don't get a crow's nest or my line get all backed up on itself. And right now, I'm starting to get tension. And you see that my line is nice and tight. And that's perfect. But I'm not quite right, right at the depth that I want to fish yet. Because if I was to set my minnow Right here, what would happen is my minnow would be swimming all around in the weeds. And that wouldn't be good. I wouldn't be able to actually fish at that level. What instead, what I need to do is I need to roll it up about six more times. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see, because I'm using this board, that doesn't give me much space because my board doesn't have much room. But if I was actually fishing, on the real ice, that would give me a lot of space. And that would get me the appropriate amount of depth off the bottom. Now, all I do, unhook my sounder. And now it's time to hook my minnow on. What I'm gonna do now is show you how to actually hook your minnow on and set your tip up like you're ready to fish. I'm gonna move my my board out of the way and move down to the actual ice fishing hole. Now I'm going to show you how to set the tip up using the actual hole. So first things first, take your ladle, scoop out all of that ice, take your sounder, hook it on, make sure it's nice and secure because the last thing you want to do is lose your sounder down the hole. 
One tip I actually do is I bring a heavy duty magnet with me in case I lose my sounder down the hole. And just let that run down. You'll see it hit bottom. Now I'm gonna wait till I, I'm gonna wrap it up until I feel it. Now I'm gonna go about six to eight more wraps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Set it down. Careful that it doesn't come undone. And this is the depth that we're gonna be fishing in today. And that'll get us right down to the, the depth that we wanna be at. Now it's time to put our fish on. You wanna take the nicest, liveliest minnow that you can find. The size of the minnow depends on the fish that we're targeting. If I was targeting a perch, I would probably go with a fathead shiner, or a small little shiner. Uh, if I'm going after a larger species, or going after bass, maybe a medium shiner or pike, large or jumbo shiners work really well. Today, I'm going after perch, so I'm just gonna take a small shiner. To hook it, we hook it right behind the dorsal fin. We're gonna hook right behind that dorsal. Once it's hooked, set it in the hole. And I didn't mention this before, but we always put one split shot about, well, one to two split shots, about eight inches above your hook. Slide that in. Gently ease your line in the hole. You don't wanna put all your line in at once because it'll bunch up, so just ease your line in. Now it's time to set that tip up in. I have to put my line in the line holder, which is right here. Set it in. And now I'm gonna figure out what direction the wind is coming from. The wind's actually coming directly at my face. And why that is important is I don't wanna get a wind flag, meaning a false alarm. So I'm gonna set my flag so that it sets directly into the wind. And what's gonna happen? As the wind hits it right now, nothing happens. If I set it the other direction, meaning like this, if the wind hits it, I get a wind flag, meaning the wind could accidentally trip it. And you never want to get a wind flag. I mean, it can be exciting, especially if you're fishing with kids, but it's a false alarm. Uh, but for demonstration purposes right now, let's say I have, a, I have a flag, fish is on, awesome. Now what do I do? One common mistake uh, beginner anglers make is a flag goes up, they run over excited, grab that tip up out, and they lose that fish. Well, what they just did without realizing it is they yanked that minnow right out of the fish's mouth in all their excitement because the fish was just sitting there just chewing on the edge of it. It hadn't quite had a chance to digest it. What you wanna do is actually set the hook. So what I do, is instead I go over to it and I have some patience. I wait. Flags up, and what's gonna happen is this is gonna start to spin. I'm gonna watch it, it's gonna spin. And as it spins, I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna spin it myself. And as I spin, I'm gonna give some line out. And what's, what's happening is I'm giving it slack. So the fish doesn't know I'm there yet. Now, I feel the fish on the end. I set the hook, meaning I pull up. Now I put that hook right into the fish's lip perfectly and I can pull it right in. With a lot of fish, I'm able to pull them right in. That's not the case with every fish. Some fish, I have to fight them in, or play them, meaning you have to give back line. That's especially true if I have a really small leader on. As I said before, I have a six pound leader on this line. If I have a really big fish, a six pound leader is very weak. So you have to play that fish and let it have some line, tire it out, and then bring that fish in the hole. Once you've caught that fish, then it's time to resound that hole. One step that you can actually alleviate having to resound the hole every time is mark where you're sounded that hole. And the way you can do that is put a small bobber or a button where that marker was. Or even a small piece of like a BB of a, uh, a sinker, like a BB size sinker to mark where your depth was. And that is how to set a tip up.